Theme parks are some of the most popular tourist attractions around the world, but the competition can be fierce. Failing to have the latest exhilarating rides or facilities can see a rapid drop in visitor numbers, and for every one theme park that turns out to be a success, there are many more places that have fallen by the waysides. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at 15 abandoned theme parks from around the world. Number 15. Boomers, Dania Beach, Florida there are still seven Boomers amusement parks in operation throughout California and Florida, but this is just a fraction of the number the company operated in its heyday, with at least 11 having been closed in recent years. Perhaps the most famous was the Dania Beach Park, which was in Fort Lauderdale. It was home to what was once the longest wooden roller coaster in the state. Known as the Hurricane, it was 100 feet or 30 meters tall. 3,200 feet or 975 meters long and was by far the most impressive structure on site. But surprisingly, it wasn't actually owned by boomers and was run by a third party. After opening the ride in 2000, they soon found out there was a reason why Florida doesn't have many wooden coasters. That's because the humid climate significantly increases the maintenance requirements and it became commercially unviable. The coaster itself was closed in 2011, and the rest of the park with its mini golf courses and arcades followed suit in 2015, and for several years the site was left to crumble. Urban explorers managed to capture incredible images of what the place looked like as it began to be overtaken by fast-growing trees and shrubs, and it was only finally demolished a few years later to be replaced by a shopping mall. Number 14. Nara Dreamland, Japan if the huge castle at the entrance, the artificial mountain, and the main street full of stores and games of Nara Dreamland seem familiar, that's because in 1961 it was intentionally opened as Japan's answer to the Disney theme park in California. Built near the city of Nara, it was an immediate success, and at its peak attracted almost 2 million visitors per year. Things began to take a downturn, however, when Tokyo Disneyland opened in 1983, and subsequently Tokyo Disney Sea and the Universal Studios Japan, all within 30 miles or just 48 kilometers of Nara Dreamland. And visitor numbers plummeted to such an extent that in 2006, after being opened for 45 years, it was forced to close. Even by that time, there had been so little investment in the maintenance of the site that the rides were beginning to rust, and the castle itself had been declared a safety hazard. And for the next 10 years before it was fully demolished, it became more like a nightmare land. With nature beginning to reclaim the site, it was covered in foliage growing through the paving stones and the tracks of the rides. The buildings began to crumble, and rust took hold everywhere you could see. Because of its history and the way it had been left, Nara Dreamland became a popular site for urban explorers. But because of the increasing risk someone might seriously injure themselves as they walked through the decrepit structures, there was no choice but to remove what was left entirely. Number 13. Disney's River Country, Florida there's no doubt that Disney has built the most famous and successful amusement park empire in the world, but despite the company's experience in the industry, even they don't get it right every time. Disney World in Florida is by far the biggest collection of parks on Earth, and you probably know that it includes two water parks, but did you know there was originally a third? Called Disney's River Country, it was actually the company's first water park and opened in June of 1976. It was built along the shore of Bay Lake and had a Wild West theme and featured two large swimming pools, five water slides, and two large areas dedicated to children's activities. It was the success of River Country that led to the development of Typhoon Lagoon and Blizzard Beach, but with far more planning and investment going into those two, River Country was soon seen as the least exciting of them all. With falling visitor numbers and several deaths that happened on site, it closed at the end of the 2001 season and was never reopened. The structures of the park still remain to this day, albeit in a rundown state. The only thing Disney did was to drain one of the larger pools and erect fencing around the site to prevent anyone from gaining access. But in recent years, it's become a popular destination for urban explorers. It's creepy seeing a place that was designed for so many thousands of people being completely empty, with stagnant pools of water and crumbling slides all around. And while it may not have been demolished yet, there are rumors that the company eventually plans on completing redeveloping the site, perhaps as an extension to another park or as a brand new hotel complex. Who knows? Number 12. 
Yongma Land, Seoul, South Korea. Built in the 1980s, Yongma Land was a small family-focused amusement park near Seoul in South Korea. It was full of pop culture icons from the time and underwent very little development by the time it finally closed its doors in 2011, which meant it remained a memory of times gone by. Attendance had drastically fallen thanks to the opening of modern theme parks nearby and stories of hauntings, but rather than demolishing the site or preventing anyone from accessing it, it's now gained a new lease on life by welcoming visitors who want to see the park in its ongoing state of decay. With an octopus ride covered in rust to stacks of broken bumper cars, a broken clown roller coaster, and a collapsing Viking ship, the new owner charges around 5 bucks for entry, and $30 will even turn on the lights of the haunted merry-go-round in the evening. Sounds like a fun time. Number 11. Ghost Town in the Sky, North Carolina First opened in May of 1961, the Ghost Town in the Sky was a Wild West-themed amusement park in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. Built at an elevation of around 4,600 feet or 1,400 meters at the top of Buck Mountain, it was often called North Carolina's Mile High Theme Park. But at a cost of a million bucks, the owners enlisted the help of locals to faithfully recreate 40 replica buildings for the western town. And over the years, they went on to build several rides, which included, as of 1986, a full-size roller coaster called the Red Devil. Right from the start, the park experienced issues, however. Despite attracting at its peak more than 600,000 visitors each year, there was actually no public road to access it. Instead, every guest had to arrive at a parking lot at the base of a mountain and either use a funicular railway or a chairlift to reach it. In 2002, the chairlift failed and left people stuck for more than two hours. This ultimately led to the park's closure. Very little has been spent on maintenance on any of the machinery, and the owners realized how dangerous it had all become. Despite an attempt to reopen in 2007 after extensive renovations, the ghost town in the sky closed its doors for good in 2009 and has been left to fall into an even worse state of disrepair ever since. There are hopes that the investment will be found to try to reopen it again, which means that for the time being, it's been left to rust away. And it's become a thing of legend in urban explorer circles because of the difficulty of accessing the site. It's now just like an abandoned and haunted Wild West village, and the moment you set foot there, it feels like you've been transported back in time. Number 10. Dadi Park, Belgium Dadi Park in Morschleda, Belgium, was first opened in the 1950s as a playground to entertain the children of pilgrims who were visiting the local church, but became so popular that in the 1970s it underwent a program of redevelopment to install a series of new attractions, such as a huge monkey bridge course and several water rides. This brought new visitors from far and wide, and at its peak saw more than a million guests passing through the turnstiles each year. As tastes began to change, however, the park's popularity declined, and the final straw came as a result of years of underinvestment. The rides became more and more dangerous, and in 2000, a young boy lost his arm as a result of an accident on the Nordic jet ride. The park never recovered, and within two years, it was permanently closed. The larger rides were taken down over the next few years, but most of the other structures were left in place. Now overgrown, you can hardly tell that it used to be such a busy park, and the only clues of what used to be there are the occasional metal railings and derelict buildings. It has become famous within urban explorer communities for the relative ease of access and the unusual objects that remain, many of which have religious influences. But because authorities became concerned by an increasing number of people that were trespassing on the site, they've continued to demolish more and more of the buildings, and plans are now underway to convert it into a hiking trail. Number 9. Bushkill Park, Pennsylvania Bushkill Park in Easton, Pennsylvania was, amazingly, open for more than a century between 1902 and 2004. Famed for having several vintage rides, such as two wooden carousels, bumper cars, the whip, and haunted pretzel, and the oldest fun house in all of America that was called the Barrel of Fun. Covering an area of around 13 acres, the park remained popular through its entire run, and it was only due to events beyond the owner's control that ultimately led to its closure. In 2004, the region was struck by Hurricane Ivan, and Bushkill Park was subjected to extreme flooding that destroyed the haunted pretzel and a miniature golf course, and severely damaged other equipment. 
Despite on several occasions parts of the park being opened for special events, it's never been able to fully reopen since then, and large areas have fallen into a state of disrepair and have begun to be reclaimed by nature. 14 of the original 17 vintage rides have been sold and taken elsewhere, but there's hope that through renovation and replacement, the park which once played a major role in the childhood of anyone growing up in Easton will be able to once again open its gates. Number 8. Camelot, UK Whether or not you believe in the legend of King Arthur, there's one thing for sure. Camelot most certainly did exist albeit as a small theme park in England that was opened between 1983 and 2012. Based on the legends, visitors entered the huge castle when they first arrived and had a choice of a wide range of rides, just like you'd expect from the best of parks. 2012 proved to be a tough year, though, and with the continued trend of reducing visitor numbers, the park was forced to close. Some of the rides were sold to other parks, and the rest were left standing and in some cases were still visible from the nearby motorway. It's now one of the creepiest abandoned parks you'll ever see, mainly thanks to the fantasy-style theme it had, and how this now looks after the buildings have begun to decay and plants have begun to grow all over the structures. Walking through, you'd almost believe that you'd been transported to a long-forgotten time in history, and you can never be quite sure what you'll find around each corner here. Number 7. Fun Spot Amusement Park, Indiana for more than 50 years, one of the most popular attractions in all of Indiana was the Fun Spot Amusement Park. Located in Angola, it had at its peak 30 different rides, including three roller coasters, and was famous for having the only coaster in the state that featured an inversion. Also featuring water slides and an arcade, the Fun Spot Amusement Park had something that most others don't, a large area dedicated as a zoo where guests could see animals like tigers. But ultimately, this wasn't enough to keep visitors queuing to come through the doors. With much larger parks in neighboring states that had faster and more exhilarating rides, competition was tough for Fun Spot, and it simply couldn't keep up. It was forced to close for the last time in 2008, and since then, rides have remained in surprisingly good condition. One of the reasons for this is because the owners have been slowly selling them off ever since, so are still looking after them to an extent to make it easier to find potential buyers. Number 6. Spree Park, Berlin, Germany Berlin Spree Park was once one of the most visited attractions in the city, with more than 1.5 million visitors each year. But poor financial management meant that it would eventually be forced to close, and has since become an abandoned wilderness. It was first opened in 1969 to much excitement, especially because of the towering Ferris wheel. Following the reunification of Germany in 1989, huge investment was used to put it on par with Western-style parks, with roller coasters, water rides, and several themed village areas, and it was during the 90s that it reached its heyday. The lack of transport to the park, though, meant that they were never able to attract enough people to recoup the huge investment, and with spiraling debt, Spree Park was closed in 2002. Some of the rides were shipped to Peru to try to open a new park, while the buildings that remained were left to fall apart. While there are plans to try to renovate the site and reopen it, for now, it remains a memory of what it once was, and it's occasionally opened for performances, festivals, and the screenings of movies that benefit from the creepy surroundings. Number 5. Holy Land, USA, Connecticut if you ever visit the town of Waterbury in Connecticut, then it's probably worth taking some time out of your day for a little exploration, because you won't be far away from one of the most unusual parks to have ever existed, and one that despite having closed almost 40 years ago, is still accessible and as unexpected as before. Conceived by a local attorney, the idea of Holy Land USA was to replicate Bethlehem and Jerusalem from the Bible. Work on the 18-acre venue began in 1955, and it included a large recreation of the Garden of Eden, a diorama that told the story of Daniel in the lion's den, and a number of scenes and experiences that recreated certain aspects of Jesus' life. The central focus, though, was the giant 56-foot or 17-meter tall illuminated cross that can be seen from miles around. The park was successful and attracted as many as 40,000 visitors per year during its heyday in the 1960s and 70s. The owners wanted to expand things even further, so the park was temporarily closed in 1984. Unfortunately, the main investor died soon after, so the planned improvements never took place. 
The next time Holy Land USA would officially open its gates was in 2014 with a brand new illuminated cross. It's still technically closed and abandoned, but it's easy to go and explore the site, and there are rumors that a group finally plans to return it to its full glory. Number 4. Wonderland, Beijing, China It's no surprise after seeing how successful an amusement park can be, various companies decide to try to cash in and build one of their own. Of course, it's not quite as easy as it may seem, and the investors behind Wonderland in Beijing, China definitely bit off more than they could chew. The idea was that it would become the largest amusement park in Asia across more than a 120-acre site, and they do this by directly copying what had been proven to work elsewhere. Problems began in the construction phase, though, and in 1998, work was halted because of a financial irregularity. Attempts to start construction again failed in 2008 in the wake of further financial difficulties, and all dreams of finishing the project were dashed. It remained, however, with the shell of a castle and a number of other incomplete structures that became an attraction in their own right for people wanting to imagine what could have been. Local farmers who had been forced to sell their land for the park began to take it back and grow their crops there, and soon enough, very little remained. It was bizarre to see a magical world in the middle of nowhere with no actual magic, and eventually authorities wanted to be rid of the failed project. The remaining structures were demolished in 2013, and now a shopping mall stands in place of where the castle once was. Number 3. Joyland Amusement Park, Kansas Opened in 1949 and only closing 55 years later in 2004, Joyland was once the premier amusement park in Kansas. It had 25 rides, including an amazing wooden roller coaster called Nightmare, along with a number of other classic designs from the 40s and 50s. Problems began in 2004 with the aging infrastructure, which began when a young girl fell from the more than a half-century-old Ferris wheel. The ensuing investigations found that many of the other structures were unsafe too, and it would have cost so much to fix these problems that the decision was made to close the park for good. Since that day, the park has remained in place, apart from a couple of fires that have destroyed buildings and the inevitable vegetation that's begun to grow over everything, it's still recognizable as Joyland although in a frighteningly run-down state. It might not be the end of the story, though, because the site was sold in 2018 for just under $200,000, and it's quite possible that the new owners will complete plans for renovation and find a way to open it once more. Number 2. Ho Thuy Tien Water Park, Vietnam with an incredible three-story tall dragon aquarium at the center of the park, Ho Thuy Tien was set to be the next big thing when it opened in Vietnam in 2004. The water park was built around a lake with the focal feature in the middle, and as you walked up the central staircase, you'd find yourself surrounded by tanks that contained a wide variety of animals, including rays, sharks, and even crocodiles. The problem, though, was that with costs escalating, the investors of the $3 million park insisted that it opened before it was fully complete, and this led to an underwhelming response by visitors. Within a few years, it was no longer sustainable, and it was closed, with no funds left to demolish any of the structures. They were just left in place. Even the animals in the aquarium were simply released into the lake, which led to a large crocodile population establishing itself the following years. The park, which was once easy to get to, was removed from all the guidebooks, and access was restricted, meaning only those who knew exactly where it was were able to return. There was something about the dragon building, though, which had begun to crumble that seemed majestic amongst its surroundings and became such a popular destination that there were even reports of a refreshment truck offering drinks to visitors inside the perimeter of the abandoned venue. As for the crocodiles, they remained an ever-present threat to people who took the risk of visiting, and authorities were eventually forced to relocate them to a nearby wildlife park, although this hardly means the polluted water is now safe to swim in. Number 1. Six Flags New Orleans, United States Originally opening as Jazzland in the year 2000, but then being rebranded as the Six Flags New Orleans when the Entertainment Corporation took over in 2002, the local community was thrilled to see a new park opening, especially one with a wide selection of roller coasters and flat rides. Six Flags New Orleans had a Batman and Joker roller coaster, an entire zone dedicated to Looney Tunes, and a total of 27 attractions, which included four coasters and two water slides. But there was a problem with the way it had been designed from the beginning. 
The whole park had been built on four foot or just over a meter thick concrete in an area next to Lake Pontchartrain. Drainage pipes were installed because of the risk of flooding, and the rides were even built to be able to withstand hurricanes because of the potential risk of the location. But no one could have prepared for what was about to happen in 2005 with the arrival of Hurricane Katrina. One of the most devastating weather events in recent history left the park underwater for several weeks, and once the floods began to recede, it was clear that the damage had simply been too great. Six Flags decided to cut their losses and salvaged what they could for other parks while leaving the New Orleans site shuttered ever since. There's hope now, though, that it may be renovated and reopened, but with the current rate of progress, it could easily be another decade or two before this finally happens. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.